In this module, we'll review tibia fibula x-rays. This is the lower leg. We'll cover AP and lateral views. In the AP tibia fibula view, also known as the tib fib, we're at 40 inches tabletop when using our camera tube. That means our camera is 40 inches from our cassette. You've got the patient lying on the table. It's probably easier for them to lie down for this or at least to comply so that you can work around their leg. You're working all the way from the lower portion of their upper leg down to their ankle. So you'll need them to uh, give you the ability and space to do so. You'll have the patient extend their leg completely so that their knee and their ankle are flush against the cassette as much as possible. Your camera tube is pointing directly down. You're going to want to you're going to want to center your crosshairs mid shaft, which is halfway down the lower portion of the leg. The only real challenges to this is that you want to make sure that you include both the knee joint and the ankle joint in the film. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in just a minute. Now there's a lot of guys that are much taller than me, six foot two, six foot seven. If you've got people that size that are coming in and they've got long legs, sometimes they don't have to be that tall to have this issue. Sometimes they won't fit on the film. So it's perfectly acceptable to rotate your cassette so that it's diagonal in relation to the anatomy so that you can fit them all onto the cassette. The toes are going to be pointing upward and then slightly inward and your collimator has to be opened up so that you are indeed visualizing the knee joint and the ankle joint. And then of course you want to collimate side to side for this examination. A baseline technique here would be three mass at 65 kbp. Now here's a good examination of a lower leg or tib fib examination. You can see the knee joint here completely. You even see the condyles of the knee. It goes on up into the femur. But I'm just drew a, um, a imaginary line across here that shows you about how much you need. You want to make sure you clear the top of the tib fib and the knee joint as well if at all possible. We've got our fibula off to the side here. But we want to try and get the medial and lateral malleoli on here. Singularly, they're called malleolus, but these will indicate the lowest portion of the tibia and fibula, these endpoints here. So I went ahead and drew an imaginary line here that goes sort of into the foot, and you want to get as much of that as possible, as much of that as you can, so that we can visualize this entirely. The radiologist must dictate on the entire portion of this anatomy. Sometimes this can be a little tricky in your technique simply because you've got the, the calves here, it's a different thickness, and you've got a thicker bone area here, and then you've got a thin bone area here and not too much tissue and muscle that overlaps it. So you want to pay attention to, to your technique, and if you have to play with the technique, uh, feel free to do so. You want to get an overall good film across the board. For the lateral tibia fibula or tib fib, your cassette is underneath the patient. You have the patient lying on their side. Your camera is 40 inches away from the cassette, uh, above the cassette, and your crosshairs are centered mid shaft of the leg. The main thing you want to do is make sure that your knee joint and foot are parallel to the cassette. Your foot is completely sideways. You also want to make sure that your your leg is slightly flexed. This helps to encourage laterality. If you cut off your knee joint or your foot joint on this film, you'll have to do a repeat. Now, there are some people that prefer to do two images here, and that's fine too. If you want to include one film where it includes the knee joint and it goes down to this far into the tib fib and then do a second picture to include the ankle, that's fine. As long as you get the entire region as much as possible. Uh, again, I've, I've reiterated that the collimators and the cassette have to involve both joints. Let's look at a technique for this examination. Three mass at 65 kbp. Now here's an evaluation of the lateral view, I wanted to 
go into anatomy just a little bit so that you can identify a good lateral. We want to see the patella in profile. There you see the patella and, and you want to see it offset from the femur itself. We can see the joint space right in there. So that might be an immediate indicator that you got a good lateral. You also want to try to see the knee in profile and if you've got too many bumps and humps up in here, <laughs> then you've probably messed up your lateral just a little bit. The idea is to get a lateral knee as much as possible so that you can identify. Here you've got overlap uh, of the proximal tibia, fibula, and you've got overlap here in the distal. There's always going to be an inner space here in between the two because these bones aren't perfectly straight. They kind of arc out. But So in order to determine if you've got a good lateral and overlap, you're going to be looking in these areas where the joint space is and where the fibula uh, is, is inward and then comes out and then back into the overlap of the tibia. We've identified the me media malleolus here. As it falls down into the foot joint, you can see them, uh, the two malleoli overlapping one another as well. This concludes our evaluation of the tib-fib radiography.